Hey y'all, welcome back. Number 49, we've got a, a little bit of a head scratcher on this one. It says the function above has an inverse function for which of the following values of A and B. So to really answer this question, I think the best way to go about doing this, um, and I'll explain you know, what an inverse function is and all that, but I think the best way to approach this is visually. Okay, so I'm gonna try to sketch this out. This is a piecewise function meaning that it's a function which is defined differently for different parts of the domain. So it's essentially saying that we're going to graph y equals x squared. And so, you know, if I were just to graph y equals x squared, I'd do like a, just a quick little sketch of it. You know, it looks something like this. It's a parabola. And... Uh, and, but yeah, here, here's the problem, is that we want it to be y equals x squared, but only for when x is less than or equal to zero. So x is equal to zero here. And then we have our pot, you know, along this y-axis, zero right here. And then we have our positive values like one, two, three, four, all the way to positive infinity, and then negative one, negative two, and so forth. So if we want the graph to only be represented by x squared when x is less than or equal to zero, then we really only want this left-hand portion of the graph here. We don't want anything to the right of zero from that's coming from this one. So um, the way that this graph should be sketched out is kind of like this. We're going to have a closed dot uh, at the origin because zero squared is zero, and the domain restriction for this piece of the piecewise function is x less than or equal to zero. So we are going to include the value at zero. And then so I'm just going to sketch just a quick little sort of left-handed parabola here. Just the left-hand portion of that parabola. Okay, so the right-hand part of this graph for when x is greater than zero, um, if x is greater than zero, then it's going to be to the right of this y-axis. Now, I'm going to go through each of these answer choices and figure out, well, which one of these would, would uh, have an inverse function? So to be able to answer that, even if I were to graph them all out, I don't think you'd be able to tell uh, unless you know what an inverse function means. So what it's really saying is that um, this is the function, right? Now, every function does have an inverse. So any of these values could work as far as just giving, the, you know, as far as um, the function having an inverse period. Okay, but what this is really asking is, for which of these combinations is the inverse a function? So a, a function is a relationship where each input only has one output. An inverse is where you swap your inputs and outputs. So typically your inputs are x's and your outputs are y's. And when we test to see if a relation is a function, um, we're testing to see if each x value only corresponds to one y value. Now visually, we have this test called the vertical line test. And the vertical line test says that if you can draw a vertical line, anywhere on the graph, and it hits the graph more than once, then y is not a function of x. Uh, because that's indicating that a particular x value has more than one output. So um, to test to see whether or not the inverse is also a function, we have something called the horizontal line test, which is basically the same idea, except we'll be drawing horizontal lines to test to see if the inverse is a function. So I'm going to do some pretty rough sketches here, um, but just to kind of get the idea, I think you'll see it. Um, I think you'll, you'll I, I, I hope that you'll understand why we're picking the answer we're picking once I kind of show all of them. So let's say that A, which is the slope, so really the second part is a linear equation. It's in this mx plus b, classic linear equation form, where the coefficient of x, that's going to be the slope. That's going to dictate how steep the line is. If it's positive, it's going up. If it's negative, it's going down. That's really all we care about for, for this particular problem. And then this B is the y-intercept. So that's where it's crossing the y-axis. 
So for letter A, the slope is negative 1, meaning that it's going downward, and the y-intercept is at negative 2. Now I'm just going to, like I said, I'm just going to make some kind of rough sketches here. Um, I'll do A in blue, kind of just color code all these. And so if the y-intercept is 2, that puts it down somewhere over here. You know, I'll just say like 1, just to kind of get something going here, 1, 2. Um, and the slope is negative 1. So basically, we're going to have an open circle. Well, maybe I'll, I'll actually draw an open circle here. might be better. We've got an open circle because uh, this function is only going to be defined for positive values of x. Remember that we're only working on the right-hand side here for the second section. Um, and then we've got a slope of negative 1. So it's going to be going downward kind of like this. Okay. So you can see that if this were, you know, if A were negative 1, B were negative 2, this would be a function. It passes the vertical line test. But the question is, is the inverse a function? Um, and we'll come back to that once we have them all sketched out. So there's part A, or letter A, rather. Let's sketch out B here. B has a y-intercept of 2. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit above here. You know, if I say 1, 2... And this one also has the same slope as uh, part A. Um, so since it's got the same slope, it should be going in the same direction, you know, something like this. Okay. So again, this both of these would be safe to call the original function, the original relation a function. But the question is, which of these um, would make the inverse a function, essentially? So, like I was saying before, um, to test whether the inverse is a function, we want to use the vertical line test. So I'm only going to graph these two right now because I don't want it to get too messy. I'll go through the rest and show you why they're not um, afterwards. Um, but we already have the answer here. So if I were to draw a horizontal line, say right here, and letter B was my answer choice, I would have a horizontal line here that would cross through the graph more than one time, here and here. And so this would, this, the, even though this itself, y is a function of x, the inverse is not a function. So since the inverse here is not a function, we, it fails the horizontal line test, we can say that b is not going to be our answer. Now let me erase that real quick because I want you to see choice a. Oops. So choice a is down here, right? It's got a negative... Uh, y-intercept and a negative slope. We can see that no matter where we draw a horizontal line here, we are only touching the graph at most one time. There's nowhere where I'm drawing a horizontal line and it's hitting the graph more than once. And that's how we know that A is our answer. That means that you know, if, it, if it passes this horizontal line test, that means the inverse is a function. So just to kind of show you, you know, why the other choices aren't um, correct, just to kind of give you an idea, you know, see what's going on here. Um, C says that the y-intercept is negative 1, so it's going to start here, but that the slope is 0. When the slope is 0, we have a horizontal line like this, okay, which obviously would fail the horizontal line test. If I drew a horizontal line right here, it would hit this piece, portion of the graph infinitely many times. So you can see it can't be C. For D, it says the y-intercept is negative 2, so same y-intercept, but that the slope is positive 1, meaning the graph goes up like this. And you can see why the inverse of this would not be a function, because it would fail, once again, the horizontal line test. The last option here has a y-intercept of 2 and a positive slope, so it's going up to the right, and once again, it fails the horizontal line test, so E doesn't work either. So if you're trying to think of like, well, what, you know, what are all the answers that would work here? Number one, you would need a y-intercept that is either at zero or below. So B would have to be, I guess it could be zero, but uh, for the most part, it would have to be negative. So it'd be less than or equal to zero.
So that would be one condition that would have to be true for this problem in order for the inverse to be a function. The other condition is that the slope has to be going down. Because if the slope's going up, then it's going to fail the horizontal line test eventually. It can't go horizontally um, because that would fail the horizontal line test just by itself. And so the A value here, or the slope, has to be negative. So as long as the, you know, if you're looking at a similar problem here, um, these are the conditions that would have to be true in order for the inverse to be a function, and the only one that satisfies that is choice A here. I know this was a little bit of a challenging problem, um, but as long as you know what it means to be a, an inverse and what it means to be an inverse function, um, I would suggest sketching out the graph and, and just using the horizontal line test. It's probably the easiest way to do this one. So that's it for 49. Um, hope you all enjoyed the video. Have a great day.